Good evening everyone, my name is Paul Young. I want to talk a bit about the Canada Pension Plan. My agenda will be, I'll discuss what it is, I'll discuss how it works, I'll discuss what the investment board is, I'll discuss returns, and then I'll discuss government policies. So let's talk about the whole thing right now. Canada Pension Plan came in play in the mid-60s. So if you look at uh, this chart here and you look at basically around the 60s, you're seeing the average life expectancy of a male of 68 and female 74. Now let's fast forward to now. Basically we're seeing 11 more years added to people's lives. So that means that's 11 more years CPP is going to end up paying out to people. And you're seeing 83, so that's 9 more years. So now what you're seeing now is you're seeing life expectancy rates have gone up. That puts a lot of strain on pension plans. Now, when was it created? 1965. Who created the Liberal government under Lester B. Pearson? Now, in 2013, basically, the, you would see certain amount taken out, uh, like 500, almost $600 was taken on average by people. But you could have a maximum amount of $1,000. Now, before you got, jump the gun and ask yourself, okay, the CPP was set up to be supplemental retirement income. There's so many other options out there from tax-free savings accounts to RSPs to home equity that it's not supposed to be designed just to be sole source of income. And during the election campaign, that was a liber liberal government party to kind of say they're going to save you from protect you in your retirement. Now, that you need to take some responsibility for your own actions, and that's what it's really about as well. Why was the CPP investment board created? Well, the government, like anything else, whatever they can touch sometimes, don't necessarily run things in the most prudent, efficient, and effective way. So what happened was in 1997, Paul Martin created this investment board to be an independent third party to basically manage the pension funds, just like you have mutual fund companies that manage the pension funds there. They're supposed to be independent, which means that they're supposed to be a direct influence on people to make decisions to enforce those decisions so investments could be made by looking at returns and risk management now look at what you're seeing here what I really want you to show is the top right hand chart to look at the growth in the funds okay so if you're gonna try to get pension growth you have to look at what your pension drawdown is and you have to exceed that in terms of the market growth and that's what's critical in any sort of fund balance okay in the 90s it was not sustainable we were not we were taking more out of the fund that was in the fund balance that's why structural changes had to happen with agreement by the provinces that's not something that was talked about during the election campaign it was never talked about by Justin Trudeau now as part of the overall pension reform concepts so you need to bear that in mind but look at what you're seeing as the annual rate of return 8% over a 10 year period that's a pretty good return considering how the markets have done over the last 10 years with the the fall of the um, the housing bubble now this was to show you the kind of the unfunded right now there were some serious issues in the 90s that had to be addressed and that's what this is showing you here and basically what they're saying now is the pension fund itself is sustainable okay so it needs to constantly be reviewed because as I saw earlier with the life expectancies we've seen that we need to be very cognizant of that now let's talk about government policy because it's going to drive this now old age security to keep it sustainable what they try to do because it's paid with tax dollars too as part of the, the overall pension reforms what they decided to do the Liberal Party hasn't approved it yet wants to move the the age back from 67 down to 65 now there's no discussions of how that change is going to impact the overall budget but there's a there's some considerable pressure on future dollars of tax dollars to support that change but nothing's been discussed okay second thing is the Liberal Party has said during the elections and recently that they're going to ask the, the CF, the Canadian Pension Plan Investment Board to make investment infrastructure. Now, remember that chart I showed you with the 8% return. Unless a project's going to gain you significant returns of 8%, then really, you're not going to do those projects. CPP, CPP, IAB will look at projects that bring a return. But you're not going to hear that from the Liberal Party. You're going to hear them to try to put influence. And we've seen during the 90s when they did a certain amount of influence, what happened to those liabilities. They became huge unfunded liabilities and huge risks there. So that's something you need to bear in mind when you're listening to government policies around pension reform. The other thing that you need to do, you also need to take some responsibility for your own pension strategy. The youth today isn't doing enough to look out long term in terms of using 
vehicles there like the tax-free savings accounts looking at RSP contributions they're really not looking at there it's almost like they're living for today and not worried about tomorrow and that's a significant amount of risk but that plays in terms of the socialism policies that will take care of you so you need to bear that in mind this presentation was done to kind of illustrate CPP illustrate the pressures with CPP thank you